welcome to Colleagues Getting Coffee. My name is Annalise James and today I am joined by two fantastic people, Richard Roberts and Simon White of the Yacht Market. Hello. Hi. Hi. Nice, nice to see you. Good. It's nice to have you here, guys. So we're talking to them for a couple of reasons today. One, because you run an amazing company called the Yacht Market. And two, because you've now started a new initiative, which sounds fantastic. Yes. Spoiler alert, you'll find out more in a minute. So first things first, tell me about the Yacht Market, how you guys started your business. So the Yacht Market, we uh, set up uh, 16 years ago. Um, and we, we were at a stage of our lives where we were thinking, what are we going to do with ourselves? I was doing some architectural work. Simon was doing programming. We came together um, and eventually came up with, with the concept of uh, an online classifiers for boats. Mm. Um, we now have over 50,000 boats for sale globally, uh, 2.7 million customers worldwide. And um, it's, uh, an, it's an exciting place to be. That's crazy. So what's been your secret to success then in the yacht market? Uh, it's certainly been a lot of hard work. Mm -hmm. um, um, one of the things that's core to our, our vision is making sure that the user experience is as good as it can possibly be. Um, people will get bored um, with a website if it's not fast, um, if it's not delivering the, the information that they want, and it's got to look nice as well, let's face in it. Fact, in fact, we are the world's fastest marine classifiers website. Yes, it's I, true. I feel like we need to test this. I love it. <laughs> Bring in the laptop. Oh, yes. <laughs> Contest. I love it. So 16 years in business together, that's mm -hmm. amazing in itself and Yacht Market is such a well-known brand so you actually support the used to support the Southampton boat show but you yes. also do boat shows abroad don't you as well yes uh, we visit boat shows abroad and uh, we're, we're looking at uh, expanding into the United States in a big way um, we were the title sponsor for two years of the Southampton mm -hmm. boat show uh, which really did help us uh, fortify our position in the UK yeah. um, and uh, no it's very exciting uh, we've we literally the last couple of years our feet haven't touched the ground I've uh, been in Fort Lauderdale, we've just got back from Scotland, Monaco, all over mm. the world. So uh, spreading, the, spreading the message, uh, you know, that the yacht market is a, is a great place to be and to sell, buy and sell boats mm. safely. So what you've done is you've channeled this, obviously successful business, 16 years of connections and community, and you were inspired by a new initiative. I don't want to talk about it, I want you to tell me, but it's called Ocean Saviour. Oh, I love the name, let alone anything else. So, <laughs> so, so we, we were watching um, a Dave Attenborough show um, and we, the, the Blue Planet 2, um, and we decided that we can't allow um, this ocean plastic and the devastation of our oceans to continue. Um, so we thought, is there anything that we can actually do? Mm -hmm. Can we actually um, help improve the, the, the health of our oceans? Um, and after scratching our heads for a little bit and thinking, are we mad enough to do this? We decided uh, that we are mad enough. Oh, okay. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Yes. So what we did is we, we had a look at some, some, initi some, some existing technologies that are out there, like river skimmers, uh, which are going around uh, just sort of collecting plastic from... Um, from rivers on on a small scale, and we thought, well, how, how why can't we scale this up to an ocean going size, um, and, um, and and actually go go out to to where the oceans uh, are collecting the plastic in these in these large currents, um, and and take these vessels out there and, and clear it up on a on a massive mm. scale. Um, we sort of also considered the prospect of bringing the plastic back to shore when we, um, once we've retrieved it, and realised that, well, actually, it's a long distance to... Hugely to take, costly. ...to take mm. that uh, plastic back. And another problem is that if even if you do get the plastic back, a lot of it's been degraded by ultraviolet rays. Uh, some of it's been out there over 50 years because it just doesn't break down. Oh, my God. So, so it's, uh, it's at a stage where you can't really... A lot of it, you can't really recycle it because mm. it, it's no longer good enough quality. So we thought, let's see what we can do to process the plastic actually on board the vessel and this is where we came up with the idea for this plasma reactor <laughs> <laughs> which completely destroys the plastic um, and actually the, the beauty of it is it turns it into a type of fuel which can actually um, help power the vessel to keep it running mm -hmm. longer. So we contacted um, one of our friends uh, Ricky Smith who's a super yacht designer, an interior designer, um, Dr Andrew Baglin who's um, a, a naval architect and um, a wonderful guy called Stuart Frazier. Uh, down in Australia. They designed um, a 70 metre tri-deck vessel for us. Um, it's a catamaran. Um, initial costings for that uh, were coming in at around about 45 million per vessel. Wow. 
Um, the, the actual vessel itself um, has two large 60 meter booms either side. They, they go out 60 meters and come down to about three meters in the water. Um, but as Simon's mentioned, we, we were trying to understand how uh, we would dispose of the plastic, uh, the cost of getting it to land and so on. Uh, and this is where the plasma gasification comes back in. So the plasma gasification technology is, is just amazing for, for this project, actually. Um, it's uh, it's a, a tried and tested technology that, that um, it already exists in, in uh, land-based applications, um, but it has been... Uh, I'm, going to say, I'm not going to say miniaturised because it's still quite big, but it has been scaled down to a size that can be used on a ship already. Um, and it's actually uh, in use in the Gerald R. Ford aircraft carriers um, in the US military. Um, they um, use it there to destroy all the waste that's um, on board the ship um, so that they don't have to keep going back to, back to land to mm -hmm. get rid of the garbage, basically. Um, they don't need the power from it because they're nuclear powered, so they just use it just for mass reduction. Um, but for us, we just figured it, it makes sense to, um, I'm not going to say killing two birds with one stone because it doesn't sound right for an eco project, <laughs> but we're certainly solving two problems with the same solution of getting the plastic out of the ocean yeah. and provide, using that plastic to provide uh, fuel to keep the, the ship going for longer. The big problem that we had was 45 million is a big ask mm -hmm. uh, if we're looking for charitable donations and so on. So we've been looking at other vessels around the world um, and um, it looks like we will be able to upcycle, which is great for our ethos of the company, of the organisation should I say, um, upcycle existing vessels um, for the purposes of the Ocean Saviour project. So it's quite exciting. And what sort of cost-saving is that? Kind of thing? Do you know well, that? we're looking potentially, uh, rather than the 45 million pound mark, we're looking between five and eight million for per vessel. That is a great saving. So it's, uh, it's, it's, an excite it's exciting for us. So mm -hmm. we've got some wonderful friends and contacts um, uh, who uh, are working with us to make sure that we can uh, get the project uh, moving forward constantly. Um, and uh, yeah, it's very exciting. So obviously you guys are doing some big steps here to create a solution, but people will start chiming up about things like gasification. Well, what does that impact our environment? Yeah, I mean, so for us, that's a really good question. And for us, um, we really want to ensure that this project has a net benefit to the environment. We, the last thing we want to do is take pollution out of the sea and put it into the atmosphere yeah. because it's just moving the problem from one place to another. And we all know the atmosphere, you know, it's, the, the plastic in the ocean is a huge problem but it's not the only problem that our planet is facing. Absolutely. So we've got to look at this completely holistically. Um, again, the beauty of the plasma gasification is that it's not like um, traditional burning of plastic. Um, if you've ever burnt plastic, you know that the, the toxic fumes and the smells that come off it are absolutely Filth. horrendous. Yeah. Um, this is different to that. It uses a temperature um, which is almost as hot as the surface of the sun, about 5,000 degrees C. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, in the absence of oxygen, it actually completely atomizes the plastic um, rather than burning it. So at this temperature, um, the horrible toxic gases like furans and uh, dioxides uh, just don't form. Um, then when the, that, that actually produces a gas um, called synthetic gas or syngas, which is a mixture of um, carbon monoxide and, and hydrogen, and that can then be um, to generate fuel um, and the, the gases, the exhaust gases from that process are quenched rapidly again to prevent these nasty gases yeah. from forming. So it's, a, it's, a, it's actually a very, very clean process for the atmosphere as well, which is great. I love it. Now, I don't want to be devil's advocate here, but the other thing people are going to say, because you have those big arms that go mm. out into the ocean, it collects plastic, but it must also collect other, I guess, like um, animals from the ocean as well, mammals, maybe seals or fish, but what have you thought about that? So the actual booms themselves are, although they're 60 metres long, they go down three metres. Oh, okay. Um, they don't go down any deeper than that. So um, there's a lot of creatures uh, that will pass quite nicely underneath it. Um, but any other um, porpoises or other mammals that we may be looking at, um, we'll, we'll be deploying uh, ping devices and basically trying to make the environment as, you don't want to be around here. Yeah. But, but also uh, when there are algal plumes, uh, which is very important uh, to the marine uh, life, if you like, when there are the algal plume bloom, 
blooms, should I say, uh, are out, uh, then we would not be um, using the equipment and, and the ocean saviour to whilst those are, uh, are breeding, if you mm. like. So we do need to do a lot of research still on the wildlife aspect. But as I say, we are not wanting to kill life. We're wanting to sustain it and make sure that uh, you know the, the beautiful I call them my sea babies mm -hmm. uh, don't have stomachs uh, full yeah. of ocean plastic I think it's amazing that you guys are actually doing something about this and how lovely that you just watched a program and saw that the planet is struggling as everybody does we actually decided to do something about it so David Attenborough's got a lot to answer for oh I bet thanks David and, and James Moneyball <laughs> the executive producer who's a wonderful guy <laughs> I love it you guys are getting right in there with all these eco warriors <laughs> um, what is the situation with the plastic then and how much impact can this make for the for the good well we've uh, done some calculations um, on sort of how much plastic we can take out of the ocean um, per day with one ship. Uh, it turns out it's about five tonnes of plastic per day, wow. uh, which equates to about 2,000 tonnes of plastic per year per vessel. So to clean up the whole of the Pacific Gyre, which is the uh, the, the, the most well-known gar uh, Pacific garbage patch, yeah. um, which can, actually contains the most plastic of all of them, um, it would take one vessel about 40 years. But we're thinking of a fleet of vessels. So, mm. for example, 10 vessels shortens that time period down to just four years. So it's an industrial scale cleanup yeah. that we're doing here. Um, and it's uh, uh, we're, what we're trying to do is make sure that we've got uh, the entire package sorted out yeah. um, and make sure that all of our uh, I's are, are dotted and our T's exactly. crossed. Um, and then we believe that it's a, a national uh, UN project potentially yeah. uh, that we can pass on and say, look, this is what we need to do and this is how we can do it. Rather than talking about it, what are we going to do about it? We have a solution to mm -hmm. it which will aggressively go after uh, and protect our oceans and clear and up plastic. The loveliest thing about this is that you guys are doing this altruistically, aren't you? You're yes. not, there's no money for this, nope. it's not for profit. And it's just you guys thinking, well, we've got this black book of contacts, we've got this legacy of marine industry and actually it's our planet it's everybody's planet i just think it's amazing our payback for this is yeah as you say it's not money it's just i, I love this planet we both do we love living on, on the yeah. planet we love breathing the air and and and, and being in, in yeah. with nature and, and our payback is is if we can still continue to do that because we've saved it that's that's payback enough for us yeah. but also but also you've got to think about the kids you've got to think about the kids that are coming into the marine industry um I personally love the marine industry. It's like a big family to me. Yeah. Um, but, you know, if, if all of our oceans... Um, I saw, um, I think it was in Cape Town, one of the big ports there, uh, a big storm came in and the whole of um, the port of Cape Town was absolutely full of plastics. You just simply wouldn't be able to move through it. Um, and it's going to get worse and worse yeah. and worse. Well, we just don't stop, do we? And this has been since like the 1950s. Yeah. It's just been endless yeah. and endless and endless. So we're now realising, and I just think with everything, it's just awareness and then actually doing something. So I, I always feel super emotional when you guys talk to me about this project because I just always think, yes, you're going to save the world. <laughs> oh, I love it. So. But, but, but there's another really, really important um, part. The, the, um, even with a fleet of ships, we will not be able to get the plastic out of the oceans as fast as we're currently putting plastic Absolutely, in. So it's yeah. really important to, to look at this project in conjunction with other projects which are preventing the plastic, yeah. um, whether that's by reusing, re recycling, and obviously reducing the, the use of, of plastic, especially for the mm -hmm. single use type. Um, so sort of just stop it getting into the oceans in the first place. Yeah. And, and I, think the, I think the big problem we've got is that there are a lot of developing nations that don't actually have a garbage policy. Yeah. So part of the project is a, an education policy that we're, we're developing as well. And that is to show uh, you know, some of these developing nations that you, what you can actually do. But also I think legislation is needed to stop um, manufacturers selling single-use plastic products or products that are wrapped in single-use pl plastic to nations that don't actually have a garbage policy. Yeah. You know, it's literally being dumped in their lorry loads into rivers and it's coming out at sea. So, yeah. you know... We, it is shocking, isn't it? Mm. It is shocking and how slowly awareness does happen as well. Yeah. So you guys are going to get involved in the education piece as well for the newer generations coming up. I, I think the younger generation are much more aware of this. Yes. But are you guys thinking about that longer term as well? Absolutely. And I think um, it was interesting when we first launched the project um, uh, um, in 2018 
uh, we we were met with uh, some interesting children that that were so excited about it uh, that they've actually done talks uh, at their own schools. Oh, um, so it's so it's, it's you know we we've got a lot of uh, a lot of plans uh, and a lot of interesting things that are mm-hmm. happening. I can't go into too much. Um, but um, yeah, it's a question of watching this space and see how we how we actually get on with it. So, if anyone's watching this and they're like, "I want to do something," how do I help? What do I do? How do I support you? Is there anything that they can do? Yeah, so we'll, we will be setting up um, a donation page on our website, uh, which is oceansavior.org. Um, that will be coming soon. It's not there yet. Um, but in the meantime, if anyone wants to go to that website and uh, sign up for our newsletter okay. or follow us, follow the Ocean Saviour on, on its uh, Facebook page, yeah. then we can make sure that they're informed when that donation page is ready. And obviously all of the, all of the things that everybody can do to help is, is just to reiterate yeah. the, the reduce, recycle and, yeah. um, and, and reuse um, mentality. There's, there's so many sort of uh, ways that you can not use plastic if you just use your imagination, like putting a, you might want to wrap something in fin- cling film because that's what yeah. you've always done, but you can put a bowl in the, put it in a bowl in the fridge with a plate over the top. You don't yeah. necessarily need any, any plastic. And they've got those love wax things now, haven't those bee wax like things instead of yeah. cling film yeah, and stuff Yeah, exactly, as well. which uh, you Gloss, use over yeah. and over again. So yeah, getting rid of the single use plastic. Um, yeah. Is our biggest priority. Yeah. So you guys plastic free at home? Getting there is <laughs> hard. difficult. It's really difficult. hard. But, but we yeah, are so mindful hard. of it now yeah. and we are And that's the of, first thing, the awareness yes. and then reducing yeah. and then thinking, okay, alternatives. And it is a slow process because yes. every I mean I've been to the shop oh, since I've got met you guys. I've been to the supermarket and I'm like, I can't get away from buying plastic. Like how can I let's like, unwrap all my apples yeah. in the store? Yeah. Like, I can't everything comes in plastic. So it's yeah. it is difficult. It's just it is difficult. Really just embedded in our society, mm. which is truly sad. But I think, again, it's, it's awareness. Mm. Um, I think we've got to show respect for our oceans. I think that there are a lot of initiatives that are going on now, like beach cleaning. Yeah. Uh, we're, we're, we support and help um, other an- initiatives like that. Um, and, and I think that actually the children are educating us now. Mm. Um, you've got Greta, Greta Thonberg, oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, who's doing a lot of interesting work and... and Really annoying, quite a few of the uh, stalwart really politicians. She's really She's amazing. She's she really is. I love her. Yeah. I'm like, go girl. Yeah. Yeah. She's a she's incredible, yeah. an incredible yeah. young lady, um, and you know, tie this tie ocean savior in with with the other environmental mm. projects. Um, you know, it's it's but we do have to uh, mm. think about this as a global industrial mm. cleanup, final cleanup yeah. of our oceans. Yeah. Uh, and again, educational packages, uh, making sure that less plastic is entering our oceans yeah. um, and uh, for the developed world to actually take responsibility and help uh, some of these de- uh, underdeveloped countries mm. to, uh, yeah. to preserve this. Legislation works really well as well, um, or can do if it's implemented mm. correctly. Uh, for example, the, the, the plastic bag tax introduced yeah, a few years really ago good, yeah. reduced the number of, I, I think we were, we were um, creating, just in the UK alone, giving away uh, several billion plastic bags per year before that was introduced. And, and after the introduction of, of the 5p or 10p charge for mm. a plastic bag in the supermarket, it came down, it reduced the usage by 80%, which is which was fantastic. That's huge, yeah. yeah, that is. A 5p, a bag, that's crazy, isn't it? Like, <laughs> like it's such a small amount of money, really, but people, it's the idea of paying for yeah. that piece of plastic then. Like, well, why would I invest in and that? And also, it focuses the mind, yeah. doesn't it? 5p, 10p, it's not yeah. going to break the bank in, in most cases, but it does focus the mind to just remember to yeah. sort of take your old yeah. plastic bags or canvas bags. It's all, to not the automatic process yes, then, it's yes. like, yeah. Amazing. So guys, have you got any parting words for anyone watching? I know you've talked about the website and people getting involved and, and re-education, but anything else you'd like to tell our viewers? From my point of view, it's be aware mm-hmm. of the plastics that we've got, uh, yeah. the issues, um, make sure that we recycle as much as possible. Uh, try not to buy, you know, black plastics, which are carbon black, mm-hmm. which you can't recycle at all. Um, and uh, you know, make sure that we we respect our oceans because that's what we're trying to do. Okay. Yeah, and for me, just let's look after our planet because it's the only one we've got, and, yeah. uh, and it's really nice. So let's keep it that way. Absolutely. That. I want to thank you guys for this project, and I want to thank you for giving us the opportunity to talk to you about it. And thank you. I just see, always feel super emotional, like always like. Woo! 
So um, I, I love what you're doing and I'm so, so grateful. I'm sure our viewers will be too. Thank so thanks much. for joining us. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks.